of the valley will fall into the Patapsco River. And crews are going to detonate explosive charges placed within the steel. It's scheduled to happen in just a couple of moments. WMAR 2 News Elizabeth Worthington is live at Fort Armistead Park to give us a very good view of the demolition. Yeah, Jamie and Kelly, that is supposed to happen any minute now. We're going to get a horn blast one minute before. We haven't heard that yet, so we still have at least another minute to go. And then 10 seconds before, we're going to hear three horn blasts. So we'll just stay on this shot because I know this is what everyone wants to see today. So we are down at Fort Armistead Park. Only the media is allowed down here right now, so you can imagine there would probably be a lot of people down here watching, but they're only allowing the media down here right now. So what we're going to see is a few puffs of smoke, and I think we just heard, I just heard a horn, I think so. I have my uh, earphones in, so it's a little bit hard to hear. They are passing out, uh, passing out ear protection because it's going to sound like fireworks. And I was just starting to say, it's going to look like a few puffs of smoke. Those puffs of smoke are gonna come out where the cuts were made in the steel. So this has been going on, this prep work, for weeks now. Engineers have been carefully placing the cuts in the steel and then placing explosive charges in the cuts and when they detonate all of those charges are going to go off at one time so up until now every piece of steel that has been removed from the Patapsco River has been cut into smaller and smaller pieces and then lifted out of the river this is going to be just one fell swoop the entire 50 foot piece of the bridge is going to come down all at once so they say this is the safest and most efficient way to get rid of it oh, there we go it just happened wow there we go. Wow. And there you have it. About 10 million pounds of steel just fell into the Patapsco River. That sounded like a pretty big firework show, if you ask me. Big plume of smoke. And it looks like there's still a piece of the bridge that didn't fall away, but the piece that was on top of the ship fell into the river the way it was supposed to. And now the cranes and barges that have already been on scene for weeks are going to lift all of that wreckage out of the river, take it to Sparrows Point for recycling, just as every other piece of the bridge has been. And eventually, in about two days, they're going to be able to refloat the dolly and finally get it out of here. Unbelievable. That was something to see, wasn't it? Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Elizabeth, what about the crew on board the ship? Why weren't they allowed to get off the ship? Yeah, a lot of people have been really wondering about that. While that just happened, the 21-man crew was still on board the ship. They were below deck, they were sheltering in place, and they were taking a lot of safety protocols. There was fire crews on standby around here just in case anything went awry. But I asked the Coast Guard this morning, because that's been pretty much the number one question we've gotten since this was announced, why the crew wasn't allowed to get off. They said it's because they are the people best equipped to respond should any safety issues pop up during that controlled demolition. They, the Coast Guard Rear Admiral actually said today, quote, they are part of the ship. So that was the reason he gave. And then the governor said once the dolly is refloated and removed from the channel in about 48 hours from now, they are going to be able to get off the ship. As for what's next, where the ship is going to go once it returns to the Seagirt Marine Terminal, how it's going to get back home, how the crew is going to get back home, that remains to be determined. Unbelievable. Elizabeth, thank you for all that. All right, let's go over to Kelly now with more on what happened today.